Caroline Dowd Higgins. Thank you for listening to Your Working Life, my podcast series featuring thought leaders in the career and personal growth arena. I know that you spend a significant portion of your life at work, so I'm on a mission to provide you with tools and resources and inspiration so you can enjoy your career and love your life. And I'm so delighted to welcome my very special guest to the show, Di Worrell. Di, welcome to the show tonight. Thank you so much, Carolyn. It's lovely to be here. And I am thrilled because you are actually calling in from Australia, so I appreciate the time difference for you very much. Uh, yes, that's where I'm calling from. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let me tell the audience a little bit about you. You are an acclaimed international executive coach, a best-selling author, and award-winning business transformation consultant. You have more than 25 years of executive and consulting experience in strategy, business transformation, and human resources in the public and private sectors. And you hold numerous certifications, Di, and accreditations from recognized worldwide organizations, including a beloved dear friend of both of ours, Marshall Goldsmith's Stakeholder-Centered Coaching, the Australian Institute of Company Directors, and the Australian Graduate School of Management. And I'm really excited because you have this wonderful, wonderful resource, which you call the Accountability Code. And yeah. the first in this series is the best-selling business book, Accountability Leadership, How Great Leaders Build a High-Performance Culture of Accountability and Responsibility. And we're going to dive in tonight for a juicy conversation about that. So, Di, let's get you started. The, the process of making a mental list of hopes and dreams and particularly, you know, New Year resolutions is so popular that you could almost call it an international pastime, <laughs> right? And with this enormous popularity, you would think that we would all be masters of goal achievement by now, but that is just not the case. So why is it, Di, that so few people actually go the distance and start to waver in their resolve only a month or two into a new year? Really, really interesting question. There's an incredible disconnect going on here. You know, in my experience, most people could have a pretty decent conversation about goal setting, especially around New Year's. But if you look just a little bit deeper, you'll also hear the same people tell about their frustration and their heartbreak yeah. when their intentions for change just go down the drain, despite their best plans, determination and willpower. You know, the fact is there's a huge gap between what we think we know and what actually works. So you know, true. I've, I've been studying this for some time now. And I've arrived at the conclusion that at a very fundamental level, what we've come to know as the way to stay accountable to goals is broken. And look, it's broken on a number of levels, but here's my top three. Okay. The first one will come as no surprise. We complain about it all the time. Life. Life gets in the way. Right. Life happens. Yeah. It does. You know, there's a lot of nice, neat, traditional goal-setting methods out there that work just fine if everything goes to plan. You know, things like time management principles, smart goal-setting, all those sorts of things. They're great. It's just that they don't always work when the reality of life kicks in with the distractions, the competing priorities and crazy busyness that we now call day-to-day -day life. Right. On a second level... <coughs> Traditional methods of goal achievement are notoriously one-size-fits-all. They don't necessarily cater to our uniqueness, our circumstances, our personality, our preferences. What works to keep me accountable goals and my life can't and won't work for someone else and vice versa. And the last, last point, and, and maybe the most significant of all, the old ways of goal achievement don't account for our new understanding of just how fiercely our subconscious will do everything it can to stand in the way of changing our comfy old habits. Right. That you know, uh, basically obnoxious yeah. roommate in our head, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> you know, basically the science of staying accountable to goals has changed. 
there are some new rules and we need to update our education. And you have. You've done exactly that. So what is the new science of accountable goal achievement, Di? And, and what does it mean for the listeners today who really want to get more out of life? You know, they're tired of being stuck in that rut and they're ready to make a change. Yeah, yeah. And, gee, there's a lot of people in that position, yes. I can tell you. And you'd have the same experience yourself. Sure. Look, this new science is all about fixing what's broken. Okay. in the pathway to goal achievement. You know, our findings in this space, and we've done an, a lot of research over a number of years, it, it actually builds on the work we've already done in the workplace. You mentioned the book Accountability Leadership. You know, we're really pleased with how that's been been received by the by the business community. But, you know, the business community asked us for more. They said, you know, what happens beyond the workplace? What happens to us as individuals when we step outside the workplace? So what we did was actually extend this science of accountable goal achievement beyond the workplace. And we went into the world of personal and professional transformation. Right. So what we did, we pulled apart the old processes around goal setting, the ones that just really weren't getting those results we were talking about before. We want to see what was working and what wasn't. But you see, we took our inspiration from other fields, not just traditional goal setting. We went into the worlds like planning, change management, behavioural sciences and self-mastery. And we found that a lot of the old ways of staying accountable to goals set us up to fail. You know, we create goals and then we hope that our willpower will see us through and keep us accountable no matter what the obstacle is. But, you know, we know that willpower is going to fail the best of us. Right. Human nature. Yeah. yeah. You know, so we took accountability and we basically turned it on its head. You did. In you did. Yeah. Instead of accountability is something you assume you'll have enough of when you need it down the track, we created a new system that sees accountability as the very first step of a six-step goal achievement process. And we've given it a name. We've called it the Accountability Code. Mm -hmm. And our, our latest book, of course, the Personal Accountability Code, is all about that. How does it apply in your personal life? You know, many of those steps in there will sound familiar because there's some good stuff. You know, smart goals are good. You know, time management principles, there are some that are really good. But the difference with our approach is that we don't assume that you'll suddenly morph into a master right. of accountability right. when you need it most. Yeah. Instead, you know, we build a system of accountability that works for you and your circumstances, and we build it into every step of the goal achievement process. So that means your accountability and responsibility muscles are growing at the same rate that you're growing to help you step up to the new challenges you set for yourself. And, you know, I love that you just mentioned your your accountability muscles are growing because it really is about getting into that mental shape of being accountable, right? It just doesn't happen yeah. overnight. There are, you've created a whole new process, right? And as you said, you've yeah. turned the old process on its head. So, Di, unpack for me some of your tips for staying focused on your dreams and goals, especially, Di, when... Life happens, right? One of those things that you just mentioned right off the bat, the top three, when, when life gets in the way. Yeah. You know, we can all expect that life's going to throw us a curveball, don't we? You know, it's yeah. going to get in the way of our plans at some point. Look, in fact, you know, it's not just my opinion. I did a survey of goal achievers and coaches last year. It was a worldwide survey. And the number one issue that uh, – these people told me was about the struggle, the struggle of staying focused on goals when life gets in the way. So it really is a big issue. Um, but before we go too far on giving you a few little tips for staying focused, let's get a little bit clear that there are some life issues that are quite legitimate. Okay, great. You know, there's work issues, family and health issues that can get in the way, but that's okay. And, you know, and it's important that we make it okay and we don't resent, you know, the natural ebb and flow of daily life. You know, we're not automatons. We're human beings. We've got real life lives and real responsibilities. So let's park those for a second. Let's say they're, they're okay. Okay. What I'm talking about are some of the other issues that get in the way. You know the ones that sometimes sound like a broken record. 
I believe the technical term is excuses. <laughs> well put, <laughs> yep. Yeah, you know the ones. Let's let's try on a few. I'm too tired. I don't know where to start. There's not enough time. This needs to be perfect. I'm too stressed. Oh, I better do some more housework. I need some more leisure time. I need to be more relaxed. I'm sure everyone has their personal favourite. Uh, and by the way, if you can't think of a personal favourite, just ask someone close to you and I think they'll let you in on <laughs> Someone will <laughs> give you one. Think. Right, right. Yeah. So these are the sorts of things that you can really do something about, either in a practical sense or somewhere in your headspace. So with these sorts of issues, you really do have a lot more control than what you think. Um, and there's a couple of things, or actually there's a lot of things that you can do that we could devote an entire seminar to. But here's just a couple that you can grab hold of right now to put some of these issues into perspective and move past them. The first one is more about your headspace. Okay. Um, it's really easy for life to get in the way of your goals if you don't make a conscious effort to move some part of your life out of the way to make room for something new. You know, as fully formed adults, our cups are already running pretty full of our comfy habits, our routines, our behaviours. You know, we've got a, an amazing knack for filling our lives with something. You know that old saying, life pours a vacuum? Mm -hmm. Well, what that means for your goals is that you need to make a conscious decision to give something up to make room for a new goal. I'll take something close to my heart. Let's talk about writing a book for a second. Let's say I, I, could, I can pull out any excuse you like, but here's some of the favourites that I can throw around. Um, uh, okay, there's not enough time. There's not enough time. I'm too tired. So if I'm actually going to deal with that really seriously, number one, I need to make sure that what I'm doing is important enough. You know, it's a real priority for me. So I'm prepared to actually make the effort to do something different and make the time. So instead of reading the paper with my morning coffee, I can do a bit of internet research on my little mini iPad right. um, instead of, you know, having a look at that movie on TV that I've been looking forward to. I'll just say, well, you know, that won't kill me. I'll do a couple of hours and I'll write some notes instead. I'll tell you one of my favourites is if I really can't get it together at home, let's say, you know, I've got uh, a couple of family members or my cats. Let's tell you about my cats. You know, my cats are really, you know, they're very vocal. They want an awful lot of attention. I'm amazed they're not here right at the moment. Um, I should give an excuse for them <laughs> in advance just in case they come in to visit. In case they show. In case they show. If they're completely and utterly distracting my writing time, I get out, I go to my favourite cafe, I order a cup of coffee, and I tell you what, I can get some of the best focused time in doing some good writing in that space, and then I feel really great about myself. So with this type of goal, you know, there's so many things that can interrupt my day, but I've needed to make the conscious effort to move something else away so it gives me the opportunity to fill it with something that's more productive that's aligned with the goals that I really want to achieve. You know, thank you for um, those very specific examples, too, because I think all of us can relate to that in our own world, right? And that yeah. just made it so relatable. Yeah. Um, there's, I guess there's a second little one. It's a little one, but can be really, really very important. Uh, readers might have heard of the concept of an accountability partner. Right. Um, you know, we can, there are various people who can help you out with achieving your goals, you know. <laughs> You can have your, your formal coach, you know, formal professional relationship, amazing, wonderful people. Um, and I'm sure you've got a few of them on the line. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, you can have your accountability partners who are that less formal arrangement, you know, someone that you trust who can actually help you stay accountable. So when life throws all these curveballs your way, um, you've got someone on tap for a period of time that can really help you get things in perspective. You now it's amazing. You know, there's I don't think there's any any to do list that's ever been invented that can uh, get any better than an accountability partner. You know, there's something about having a human being you're accountable to that makes all the difference. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So I'd love to hear, Di, what about when something really does go wrong with your plans, right? How do you get back on track after a setback? Because the examples that you gave were, were fantastic. And as I said, so relatable. We can all 
envision that time where, you know, should we watch the television or should we do the work or should we, you know, think about something else or prioritize what the goal is. But sometimes things really do happen. Maybe the car breaks down or, you know, the meeting goes over. So how do you write the track then? Oh, yeah, it's so true, isn't it? I mean, you can prepare as much as you like, but some things really do go wrong and sometimes horribly wrong. Yeah, let's face yeah, it. It's life. Yeah. Um, well, I've got a, a few. I call it my six tips for getting back on track after something really does go Excellent. wrong. Excellent. Okay. You've got a plan. Yeah. So um, very brief things, but, you know, hopefully something will resonate here. You know, one really important one, and it's uh, it you know it's so easy to fall into the cycle of, feeling really bad Mm. um, and getting stuck in the cycle of blame and defeat. Mm -hmm. Um, So that, you know, to actually get yourself up out of that sort of space, you know, your headspace needs to say, look, don't beat yourself up. You don't have to beat yourself up and you don't have to look for someone else to blame for your failures. Okay. So that's like, that's, that's a, a, a fundamental position. Um, and if you got if you're struggling with that, you know, give your accountability partner a call, someone who can just help you gain a little bit of perspective, not judge you, but give you a bit, bit of perspective, help you not be defeated, and 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 lift you up a little bit. And be grateful. I know initially it sounds really hard, but seriously, setback is a most our most phenomenal opportunity to grow, become wiser, stronger, better person for it. Take a moment and think about your experience, what's actually happened, what have you learned? Could you do anything differently? Um, if you could, great, put it down to experience. If you couldn't, take a deep breath in, breath in let it out, and just let it go. Um, be mindful. Be still for a moment. You know, what have you actually done to make progress towards your goals? You know, it, people people are, I mean, are magnificent creatures. They're amazing. People do the most amazing things, but we can get so focused on what get wrong that we lose our way. Taking just a moment to be still and reminding yourself of what you've actually done and how wonderful you are can be an amazing way to lift your spirits. Tomorrow's a new day. It's a new day. It has a fresh, clean slate. Start all over again. And one little practical thing you can do that uh, I often like, is to set aside just a little bit of time in your diary to intentionally do a little positive thing, no matter how small, towards your goal. Just put it in there and start again. Brilliant. So, I love it. Those you know, ba- you those can't always steps, stop. Yeah. Right, you can't, but those baby steps help. And and thank you for mentioning gratitude. You know, I think that's yeah. such a, a magical gift for all of us and, and giving us permission to be still and get quiet and also let it go. And I can see both of us mm-hmm. channeling our, our dear friend Marshall Goldsmith in that, <laughs> yeah. you know. And, yeah. and it is, it's such a, a magical healing process. And, and part of this accountability is being able to let go of some of the things beyond your control. So you can start yeah. again, as you said. Yeah, you can start again. And these are, as you say, it's what, except what you, what's that old saying, you know, accept what you can and, um, and, you know, let everything else go. Right, right. Yeah. Well done. So Di, tell me if you could leave listeners with, you know, one or two insights that would make the most difference to them right now, achieving their goals and their dreams this year, what would they be if you could drill it down to two? Okay. These two, um, I guess the theme is preparing yourself for what's ahead. You know, you wouldn't take a trip without getting yourself in order. You might need travelling gear, make transport arrangements, you know, take the kids out of school if you're going on vacation, maybe you need some vaccinations. Could be. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but so often we head off just basically ill-prepared on some of our highest dreams. You know, why do we do that? That, uh, you know, sometimes just a good idea or, or a good goal isn't just going to cut it. So really, the first quick thing I suggest is if you're serious, who could be your accountability partner? Think of someone who's going to help you stay honest when things really do get out of hand. So that's the first quick thing that I would suggest that would make a massive amount of difference to your outcomes. And the second one is basically a series of questions. This might sound a bit weird and a lot of people don't suggest this. 
But, uh, you know, of course, you know, my theme and my, my great belief is around the power of personal accountability. And, you know, and my, my belief is that, you know, that's one of the, the, the single biggest causes of in, incredible heartbreak and failure, not only for business but for individuals. So what I would recommend is that you, before you actually even do anything, before you make too many plans, take a look. Take a look at your accountability and responsibility muscles. It's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, I've coached some very successful CEOs and senior executives, and honestly, there's no one I've ever come across who couldn't do with even just a little bit of support in this area. So here's a little self-assessment. Okay. Um, Ask yourself or find someone who knows you and get them to give you a little bit of help and ask yourself two sets of questions. The first set of question is around responsibility. If responsibility is defined as your capacity to step up and deliver on the promises you make, ask yourself these questions. Where do you tend to avoid responsibility? What's it costing you in your health your happiness or your goal achievement? Is it something you want to change and when? If accountability, that's the other side of the equation, responsibility is one side, accountability is the other side. If accountability is defined as your capacity to hold others to account for delivering on the promises they make, ask yourself these questions. Is there a conversation that you're not having with someone? And what's that costing you in your health, happiness or goal achievement? Is it something you want to change? And when? These questions get you off to a really great start to your goal achieving process. And an accountability partner is an amazing experience to keep you going and focused on your goals when life really does get in the way. That's fantastic. I love that. Thank you so much because it's practical advice and dovetails so beautifully and is a great way to encourage our listeners to yeah. read your book. Certainly, uh, Accountability Leadership, How Great Leaders Build a High Performance Culture of Accountability and Responsibility. And then the latest edition, right, the latest book, I should say, in the series, yeah. the personal edition of the Accountability Code. So, Di, tell us, how, how can we buy the book and how can we follow you online and consider hiring you as a coach? You've got so many great things to offer. Oh, look, you know, Amazon is my my uh, my preferred distributor at the moment. So, you know, check out Amazon and my name and you'll find these books really easily. And, you know, my name is D-I, as in Diane, um, Worrell, W-O-R-R-A-L-L. Wonderful. And, uh, of course, you can find me under the Accountability Code. We've got a website called theaccountabilitycode.com. And I uh, also have my personal website, which is my name, diwarrell.com. Wonderful. And you're very active on social media as well. Should we yeah. direct people to LinkedIn and Twitter? How else can they find you, Di? Uh, well, I'm LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Yes, we're all over the place. We're all there. over the place. Yeah. yeah. We're all over the place. Yeah. So, uh, you know, send me a message via LinkedIn. Um, Lovely. They come straight through pretty regularly, and I'll get back to people as uh, as soon as I possibly can. Wonderful. Di Worrell, what a joy to have you on. I so appreciate your tremendous wisdom, and I thoroughly enjoyed your book, and I'm eager to read the personal edition of The Accountability <laughs> Code. So I've got that on my, my reading list, but you are a great resource, and so good to have you on the show tonight. Thank you for being with me. Thank you so much, Carolyn. It was wonderful to speak with you. You're so welcome. And I want to thank all of you for tuning into Your Working Life, where my goal is to help you design your career destiny so it doesn't happen by default. True career and life satisfaction is really possible, and it's time to embrace what you love doing so you can do more of it. I'm Caroline Dowd-Higgins. Take good care.